Summary of the Art of Racing in the Rain by Garth Stein Enzo, an elderly dog, is sprawled in a puddle of his own urine on the kitchen floor of his owner, Denny's, apartment. He informs the reader that he is staging this display in order for Denny, who has been through so much in the last few years, to recognize that the time has come to release Enzo. When Denny returns home, he bathes Enzo, cleans up the mess, and calls Mike, a friend and co-worker, to ask for cover the following day so he can take Enzo to the vet. He states that he is unsure if this is a round-trip visit, which surprises Enzo, despite the fact that he set it up. He reiterates, however, that it is for the best, and Denny can now be free. Enzo is a racing enthusiast, and the novel is peppered with racing strategy, wisdom, and stories. His favorite driver is Ayrton Senna, a charismatic driver who, like Denny, excelled in the rain. The circumstances surrounding his assassination remain a mystery. Enzo travels back ten years in time to explain the events leading up to his display. Denny, a professional race car driver, adopted him as a puppy and relocated him to Seattle with his family. Denny and Enzo were alone for the first year, but Denny met Eve and fell in love with her immediately. Enzo attempted to love her but resented her for interfering with his relationship with Denny. Denny and Eve married within a year, and Eve became pregnant shortly thereafter. Denny was competing across the country when the baby was born. Following the birth, Eve requested Enzo's assistance in protecting her daughter, whom they named Zoe. Denny returns the following day and explains that another driver on his team crashed their car, and he was never even given the opportunity to drive. The next few months flew by, until Eve and Denny returned to work, and Zoe was placed in daycare. Enzo was left alone in the house. He was bored and lonely until Denny accidentally turned on the television, which Enzo spent the entire day watching. Denny then leaves the television on during the day for Enzo, and Enzo's education truly begins. Enzo believes he possesses an extremely human soul, and uses television to educate himself on how to be more human. After watching a documentary about Mongolia, he discovers that when dogs die, they are reincarnated as men, and this becomes his goal. He spends the remainder of his years attempting to be as human as possible in preparation for his next human life. The family moves into a small house following Zoe's second birthday. Enzo detects something wrong with Eve, even though she is unaware. She develops sporadic migraines, nausea, and mood swings. When Denny is away for a race one weekend, Eve gets such a bad headache that she packs up Zoe and heads to her parents' house, leaving Enzo alone for three days. Enzo rations toilet water but is powerless to control food, and on the second night, he begins to experience hallucinations. He witnesses a stuffed zebra, Zoe's favorite toy, come to life and molest all of her other toys. When Enzo goes to attack, the zebra eviscerates itself. Denny strikes Enzo when he returns to find Zoe's toys in shambles. Enzo suspects the zebra of framing him. Denny secures a season-long seat in a traveling race car the following year. This will require numerous absences, but Eve encourages him to go. Denny's first few races go horribly, and after discussing it with Eve over dinner one night, Denny says he needs to go away the following week to practice with his crew. Eve is enraged and fearful, and Zoe is refusing to eat her dinner, escalating the conflict. Eve agrees to make a hot dog for Zoe, but when she attempts to open the package, the knife slices into her hand. Eve refuses to go to the doctor out of fear, and Denny agrees to bandage it at home. Denny's season improves, and Eve's health appears to improve for no apparent reason. The family visits the Slippery Slabs in August, a creek location where Zoe can play. Eve slips and falls on the rocks while lifting Zoe, striking her head hard. Denny rushes her to the emergency room, where a large mass in her brain is discovered. Eve is hospitalist for months. Trish and Maxwell, Eve's parents, convince Denny to have Eve stay with them when she is released, as well as to allow Zoe to stay with them to spend as much time as possible with her dying mother. Denny reluctantly concurs. Eve, terrified on her first night home, begs Enzo to protect her and not let her die that night. He remains awake throughout the night. Months pass. Denny, Enzo, and Zoe travel to the mountains in February in order for Zoe to meet Eve's extended family. 
While there, Annika, the adolescent daughter of one of Eve's cousins, develops feelings for Denny. When she learns that Denny is leaving early to avoid the predicted bad weather, she decides that she, too, must leave early, and Denny agrees to take her. Due to the weather, the five-hour drive takes ten, and Annika decides to stay with Denny that night. Denny and Enzo both fall asleep, and Enzo awakens to find Annika at the foot of Denny's bed, removing Denny's pants, and Enzo informs the reader that she must have done so without Denny's consent. Finally, Enzo barks, arousing Denny, who flees in horror. Annika expresses her love for Denny, but he refuses to engage in conversation with her. She contacts her father, and he arranges for her to be picked up. Denny takes Enzo to California in the spring to a racetrack, where he will be driving for a television commercial, and he takes Enzo for a speed lap on the track. Enzo adores the experience, which solidifies his passion for racing. Eve dies a month after they return to Seattle. Denny receives the phone call while at the dog park with Enzo, and Enzo, overcome with emotion, flees and kills and consumes a squirrel. When Denny locates him, they drive to Maxwell and Trish's house so Denny can say his final farewell. Maxwell and Trish then inform Denny that they are suing him for Zoe's custody. Denny hires Mark Fine, a lawyer whose automobile Denny repairs at the auto shop. He informs Denny that the suit is bogus, and that he will easily prevail. However, later that day, police officers arrive at Denny's place of employment to arrest him for felony child rape, family Annika's had decided to press charges for what occurred in February. Denny and Enzo attend Eve's funeral a few days later after Mark pays Denny's bail. Enzo is diagnosed with hip dysplasia following severe hip pain caused by hours of walking to and from the funeral. Seattle receives a light dusting of snow as winter approaches. Enzo is struck by a car while out for a walk one night. Denny is embarrassed and on the verge of giving up when he attempts to pay the vet. A few weeks later, Denny and Enzo pay a visit to Mike to sign a settlement granting Denny extensive visitation and dismissing non-felony charges in Annika's case. Mike presents Denny with a zoo souvenir pen to sign, and Enzo notices a zebra floating in the pen. He realizes that the zebra is not an external demon, but a force that exists within each of us, and he decides that Denny will not accept the settlement. Ignoring his hip pain, Enzo grabs the papers from the table and leads Mike and Denny on a chase through the house, culminating in a leap out the window. Enzo urinates on the papers in the backyard, and Denny decides he is not going to give up. Later that summer, while Denny is teaching at the Seattle Racing School, Luca Pintoni, a Ferrari employee, requests a tour of the track from Denny. Denny impresses the students and Enzo with some hot laps, and Luca offers Denny a job testing cars and teaching for Ferrari in Italy. Denny declines, stating that he is unable to leave the state, and Luca states that the position will remain open until Denny is prepared. While out for a walk one winter evening, Denny and Enzo come across Annika sitting at an outdoor cafe. When they reach Annika, both Denny and Annika pretend surprise at their meeting, and Denny requests a moment to sit and speak with her. He apologizes for what occurred and informs Annika that they could never have a relationship. He claims that the first time he saw Eve, he was unable to function, and he hopes that Annika finds someone who makes her feel the same way someday. Finally, he states that he will never be permitted to see Zoe again due to her suit. When Denny is done, he and Enzo trot triumphantly home. Denny's parents pay a visit, whom Enzo has never met. Denny's mother is blind, and when she meets Zoe, Zoe remains motionless as her grandmother examines her face. Denny's father explains to Denny on the final night of their visit that they took out a reverse mortgage on their house to cover Denny's legal fees. When Mike inquires the following day, Enzo discovers that Denny's parents effectively disowned him when he refused to care for his mother but they had gradually developed a relationship over the previous several years. Soon afterwards, Denny's criminal trial begins. Mike escorts Denny to court each day, while Tony, Mike's partner, looks after Enzo. Tony receives a phone call on the third day informing him that something is wrong, and he and Enzo rush to the courthouse. While they wait in the rain, Enzo falls asleep and fantasizes about testifying in court using Stephen Hawking's voice synthesizer. He awakens to the sound of Denny declaring that the fight is over, and that he has won. 
The following day, Trish and Maxwell withdraw their custody suit. Denny is baking cookies in anticipation of Zoe's return when the phone rings. It is Luca Pantoni. Denny expresses an interest in accepting Luca's offer and inquires as to why Luca has made such a generous offer. Luca claims that his own wife died and that it was only through the assistance of a mentor, his predecessor at Ferrari, that he was able to survive and thus wished to pass the gift on. The following day, Enzo is barely able to stand. He then collapses in the kitchen, where Denny is preparing pancakes. Denny cradles him, and Enzo has visions of the fields where he was born, as well as flashes of the Mongolia documentary. He begins running through the fields, still hearing Denny's voice, and eventually succumbs to Denny's arms. The text then flashes forward to a point in the future, when Denny has just won a Formula One race on the same track as Senna. Zoe, now an adult, arrives in a golf cart accompanied by two of Denny's fans, a father and his son. They request Denny's autograph, and Denny inquires as to the boy's name. The youngster responds that his name is Enzo, and that he aspires to be a champion. Denny provides the father with his phone number, and offers to teach Enzo to drive once he reaches the required age. About the author Garth Stein was born in California's Los Angeles. His mother is from Alaska and is descended from Irish and Tlingit Native Americans, while his father is a Brooklyn native and is the descendant of Jewish emigrants. Stein grew up in Seattle and earned both his undergraduate and graduate degrees from Columbia University, earning a BA in 1987 and an MFA in film in 1990. He returned to Seattle in 2001 after 18 years in New York. He earned his racing license with the Sports Car Club of America, and was involved in high-performance driver education following his move to Seattle. He retired from racing several years later, following a serious crash while racing in the rain. These encounters served as the inspiration for the art of racing in the rain. Before turning to writing, Stein worked as a documentary filmmaker and worked on several award-winning films, including The Lunch Date in 1991, The Last Party in 1992, featuring Robert Downey Jr., and When Your Head's Not Ahead, it's a Nut in 1993, which is a personal documentary following Stein's sister and family as she struggles with epilepsy, seeking treatment through surgery. Stein has also written several plays, the first of which, Brother Jones, received rave reviews when it was staged in Los Angeles in 2005. Stein is also a co-founder of Seattle Seven Writers, a non-profit organization dedicated to promoting literacy through financial support and book donations to those in need. Stein currently resides in Seattle with his wife, Andrea Pearlbinder Stein, three sons, and a lab or poodle mix. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.